Los Angeles, California on July 8, 1927, the third of four children born to Russian immigrants. Charlie's father was an entrepreneur who established the Tree Wax Company, which sold uh, car, boat, and floor wax across Canada and the U.S. Uh, Charlie worked for his dad, manufacturing the products in the kitchen and garage until they grew large enough to open a factory. At the age of 30, Charlie became very ill from working with the chemicals. Uh, he fasted for 19 days and regenerated his liver and never looked back during his lifelong journey and commitment to health, exercise, organic foods, pure water, and an abundance of garlic. Stop there. One of the other things, too, that many of you would uh, know about Charlie is he loved to travel with his own food. And when he came to Canada and worked and visited the retailers from coast to coast, he always carried his own food. He knew exactly what he could bring across the border. He did not want to go out and eat anywhere. If he did, he'd actually bring his own food and sit there and chomp it off the table. It was quite entertaining. He was a very, very committed soul to the natural product industry. He loved health food retailers, he loved what they did, he loved the lifestyle, and, and he's truly a great person to be recognized. In 1978, Charlie went to work for Wakananga of America, which wasn't work for Charlie, uh, because his passion was the work. He sang the praises of nature's wonderful herbs, garlic being the one that he promoted the most, and other natural foods, of course. He believed prevention was always the best medicine, and he had lots of stories about that. Uh, Charlie worked for Wakanaga of America for 34 years selling Kylox products. He co-authored a book called The Garlic Cure. He traveled the world lecturing on health and was a guest on countless radio and television shows all over the world, including Canada. He visited health food stores across Canada and traveled to, uh, to Cooler with him and making sure there was enough room in the car for it. He was often remembered for bringing his almonds and dates to the CHFA shows, handing them out to retailers and friends. Sadly, though, Charlie did pass away on March 23rd, 2012, at the age of 84. But he will always be remembered as a true advocate of health, someone really committed to the natural products industry. Charlie's son, Eric, is here tonight. We're very privileged to have him to accept the award on behalf of his father. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Eric Fox. Well, it is different up here. And Matthew told me there's only be 12 people here, so I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> Charlie the Fox, that's what he called himself. And for anybody in this room that met him, you'll never forget him. And for anybody in this room that didn't know him, let me tell you a little bit about my dad. He was committed, so committed to health, more so than anyone I ever met. You never saw him drink a cup of coffee. You never saw him drink a sip of alcohol. You never saw him eat any processed food. And I was with him many times when he took his ice chest everywhere in the world that he went. <laughs> I was 13 when we went to Japan and we walked the fields in Hokkaido where they grew the kaiolic garlic. We went to Hiroshima and Osaka and Kyoto and we ended up in Tokyo. And by the 11th day, there was really no food left in that little ice chest. <laughs> he said to me, I'm hungry. <laughs> he could find the most amazing fruit and he knew every little fruit standing. This time we were in Tokyo. He said, let's go. Got on the subway and we zigged and we zagged and we ended up in some wholesale produce area and we ended up with two watermelons and we carried them through the subways and back to the hotel. He must have stolen a knife from the kitchen in the hotel. We opened it and he ate it. And that's the way he was. He was committed, but not only to his own health, to everyone's health. There were so many times in which he would pick grapes and fruit and he would fill his station wagon and he would take it to Stream Art Show in 1957 when he was on You Bet Your Life. He said he held the world record for standing on your head. And he stood on his head on the show. It wasn't long afterwards that he was selling tree wax and he was in Arizona and he called upon a hardware store and he walked in and the person behind the counter said, tree wax? Wait a minute, didn't your company have some nut job on the Groucho Mark show? <laughs> and as the, the guy's daughter was pulling on his coat, he said, hold on. Have you fired that guy yet? Because he, he's crazy. 
daughter kept pulling on his coattail. She said, Daddy, that's the man. And my dad said he went. My dad leaned over and said, do you like peaches? I've got some amazing peaches in the car. And he brought them in and gave them to the man. He was kind. He was generous. But most important to me, he was an amazing dad. And I'm so blessed that I had him as my father. He taught me so much about how to be hardworking, how to be dedicated to health and nutrition, and how to be a great dad myself. So dad, I know you're here. I know you're in this room. I miss you so much. I love you, and I'm so proud of you. This is for you. Thank you.